I'm a rare gas player, I'm a stake, I'm an actor, Jordan Goose. I've been an actor, Swift, as well, these two years. Seated. Tradition tells us that all the apostles were carried miraculously to Jerusalem as the death of our Blessed Mother approached. There they saw the angels and heard them sing as the mother of their Lord passed away. They placed her body in a coffin and buried it in Gethsemane. Three days later, St. Thomas, the apostle, arrived eager to see her who had been mother to them all. They opened the grave to discover that the body was gone. They caught the odor of fresh and fragrant flowers. They knew then at that moment that our Lord Jesus Christ had taken his mother, body and soul, to heaven. A redeemer would not permit her virginal flesh to decay. As he had kept her from the corruption of sin, so he now keeps her from the corruption of the grave. Now Our Lady did not rise with her body through her own power, as Christ had done. Rather, she was taken up or assumed into heaven by our Lord himself. That is why we call this the Feast of the Assumption. Now, there are several reasons why Catholics have always believed over the last 2,000 years this doctrine of the faith, which was finally proclaimed as a dogma by Pope Pius XII in 1950. Here are a few of those reasons. First of all, it is impossible to imagine that our Savior would permit the body of his blessed mother to decay and rot in the grave. Secondly, waiting for the final resurrection of all bodies at the end of the world is a punishment for original sin. The Blessed Virgin Mary was kept from original sin and was perfect in, in remaining sinless in her whole life. Therefore, she should be kept from the punishment of sin and from the grave. Third reason, Sacred Scripture had foretold that Mary would conquer sin. The very first book of the Bible speaks of this in Genesis 3.15. Quote, I will put enmities between thee and, and, and the woman, and thy seed and her seed. She shall crush thy head, and thou shalt lie wait in, in wait for her heel. By her immaculate exception, her lady won a victory over sin. By her virgin motherhood, she won a victory over sinful desire. And by her glorious assumption, she won a victory over death and decay. Fourth reason, the Ark of the Covenant, which contained the ta tables or tablets of the law, that is the Ten Commandments, this Ark was made of a special wood that could not decay. And King David in the Psalms, as well as St. John in the the last book of the Bible, the Apocalypse, they both speak of this ark as existing still in the temple of heaven. Now the Blessed Virgin Mary is the true ark, for she contained not only the law, but also the law giver himself. Most fittingly, she, she should be made of flesh that did not decay. Most fittingly, she should be carried bodily to the heavenly temple. Our Lady was not only taken up into heaven today, or tomorrow's feast day, this is today's vigil, but also she was crowned Queen of Heaven and Earth. She was crowned Queen of the Angels and the Saints and Queen of the Kingdoms of the Earth. What St. Luke says in chapter 10, verse 42, can be applied to Our Lady. Quote, Mary has chosen the best part, and it will not be taken away from her. Indeed, the very best part, the highest position next to Christ, was hers on earth and is hers in heaven and will not be taken away from her. Now one of the great lessons we can learn from this feast day of Our Lady is a lesson of preparing ourselves for a happy and a holy death. The most important moment in our life is the very moment that we die and that this will determine our destiny for all eternity. Either we will be saved, or we will be damned. Either we'll be with God forever, or we will be lost forever. 
And the best way for all of us to have a happy, holy death is to begin right now, and, until we die, to constantly prepare, prepare for a happy and holy death. And here's a brief summary from Catholic theology and from the wisdom of the saints on how to do that. First of all, live each day of your life as if it were your last. Do not mess around and waste time on worldly pastimes, which 99% of our culture does. Even today could be our last day on earth. Our Lord warns us himself in the, in the Gospels, he will come like a thief in the night. Hence, let us always be prepared. Secondly, say no to sin and yes to God. What does this mean? Sin leads to sadness, slavery, and death. Hence, let us resound sin at all costs and turn to God who gives us life. Our Savior said, I am the way and the truth and the life. Thirdly, do what you are doing. This is a key concept of the saints. It means living in the presence of God. The present moment always striving to do our duty and obligations with the best of intentions. The St. Ignatius Bola, this famous motto, all for the greater glory of God. Fourthly, if we fall, get up immediately. What does this mean? If we fall into sin, then get up right away, making a perfect act of contrition with the intention of going to confession as soon as possible. Never put off our conversion for tomorrow, but rather act on our conversion immediately before the sun goes down. Fifth way, charity. Aim always for the greatest of all virtues, namely charity. Our Lord Jesus Christ tells us what is the greatest of all commandments, and is a double commandment, actually, to love God with all our heart, mind, soul, and death, and strength, but the second part is to love our neighbor intensely as we love ourselves. Now, now, why do we say intensely? Because he stressed in the Last Supper to love as I have loved. Regarding the topic of a holy death, St. John on the Cross teaches us, quote, in the twilight of our existence, we will be judged on charity. Sixth way, think of heaven. Of tremendous value in taining a holy and happy death is not only to the constant thought of gaining heaven, but also the meditation on actually what heaven is. St. Paul gives us a mere glimpse with these inspiring words, quote, I, that is E-Y-E, -E, I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, nor hath it entered into the mind of man the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love him." End of quote. The seventh way is through Our Lady, the Queen of Angels and Saints. The saints all agree on this spiritual maxim, namely, quote, Mary is the shortest, most secure, and the most efficacious pathway to Jesus Christ in heaven. Then why not turn right now to Our Lady and beg for the grace to go to heaven this we can do by faithfully praying, for example, a rosary every day with proper meditation on its mysteries, especially the fourth glorious mystery, praying the grace for having a holy death. Also, as mentioned a while back, cannot think of the name of the saint right now, but it was in the Middle Ages, she revealed to this saint that if every day you say three Hail Marys, that's one Hail Mary for her wisdom, one Hail Mary for her power, and one Hail Mary for her goodness, that you will give him the grace a happy holy death. Last but not least, we should mention our daily prayers, desire and the grace to receive the sacraments on our deathbed, namely confession, holy communion, and extreme unction. Mm -hmm. Very good, could a whole sermon be devoted to this subject, but very shortly, very briefly, the great doctor of the church, St. Thomas Aquinas says, extreme unction, has the power to prepare the soul for immediate entrance into heaven after death. 
without going through the purifying fires of purgatory. All these recommendations, of course, rely on the person having the true faith, since divine faith is the foundation of all supernatural virtues. St. Paul says, without faith, it is impossible to please God, and which is a grave issue in this current crisis in the church, where Satan, throughout neo-modernism, has strayed and deceived most people who are baptized Catholic to follow the false religion of Vatican II and the false worship of the new order, Novus Order Mass. And even so-called traditional Catholics who have compromised and supported the heresies of Vatican II by belonging to the adult mass communities and also the Neo-SSPX, who think that the new Mass is legit legitimate. Mary, assume the new heaven, pray for us, amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen. 